This is TVC News at 10, the top stories tonight. Suspected herders invade hostel and plot to stay university and kill student. June 12 replaces May 29 as national public holiday. Ten candidates nominated to succeed Theresa May as British Prime Minister. And in sports, pandemonium in the MPFL Super 6 as Caterpillar's fans attack referee. Glad to have you join us at uh, 10. A 100-level student of geography has been killed by suspected herdsmen in the Plateau State University. The management of the institution says a female hostel in the school was invaded by the armed attackers before they shot the student dead. The vice chancellor of the university regrets the death of the student, whom he described as a promising young man, particularly after a successful matriculation held on Friday. The kidnappers of a woman and her son in Ondo State are demanding a 10 million naira ransom. The two were abducted at Osi community located along Akure Airport Road. The victims, 25-year-old Olawumi Adele and 14-year-old Destiny Paul, had been on their way from church when the abduction took place. The traditional monarch of the town alleged that the two victims were abducted by suspected herdsmen. Now, the 12th of June every year will now be a public holiday and the 29th of May will cease to be one. That's because President Mohamed Buhari has signed the Public Holidays Amendments Bill, officially declaring June 12 as Democracy Day. It's the day in 1993 when late Moshud Abiola is widely acclaimed to have won the presidential election. The vote was annulled and Mr. Abiola was later jailed and died before he could get out. A year ago, President Mohamed Buhari declared June 12 to be the new Democracy Day in the country. But with the presidential assent today, it officially replaces May the 29th. And as Nigeria prepares for the new Democracy Day, the National Democratic Coalition says the ingredients of June 12 need to be fulfilled. Political correspondent Ademola Lawrence reports on this. On the occasion of the 25th anniversary of the unprecedented June 12, 1993 victory of Bashoron M.K. Abiola in the presidential election, the equally unbelievable, cruel and contemptuous annulment. June 12, 1993 presidential election was one where the two candidates were Muslims and the nation stood united. MKO Abiola and his running mate Papagana Kinigbe won across the geopolitical zones of the Federation. But this victory was not allowed to stand by the military president Ibrahim Badamosila Bangida, who annulled the election on the 23rd of June. From 1993, Nigeria had two other military administrations headed by General Sonia Abacha and Abu Salam Abubakar before transiting into democracy in 1999. For these 20 years, the country has had its longest run of democracy. But Nadeko believes it is not yet celebration time for the country. The group holds that the pillars on which June 12 stood should be entrenched in today's polity. Essence of this address comes also to the culmination that we have to, we've gone too long on the wrong road. We must return to the right road. I do hope President Mohamed Buhari, the promise he made, which is in his new term, he would restore Nigeria back to true federalism. Not too long ago, Nigeria was marked as the poverty capital of the world. Nareko says this is a scary situation. People don't believe in Nigeria that we have now. They're not committed. They're committed to their own purse, to their own friends, not to the country. The question to ask is that in spite of EMB's efforts to revamp the economy, how can Nigeria with its abundant human and natural resources be so miserably poor as to be ranked even poorer than some war-ravaged countries of the world? Today's pro-democracy activist, President Muhammad Buhari, has shown exceptional courage by recognizing June 12 as a national day. But they advised the president 
to take its efforts further by addressing those issues that have held the country down on its knees for a long time. Ademola Lawrence, TVC News, Lagos. Away from June 12 matters, the Director General of the National Youth Service Corps, Brigadier General General Shuaibo Ibrahim, has announced that Corps members will no longer be posted to states where there are high security issues. Sharon Ijazon has more. It's the Batch B pre-orientation program hosted by the Lagos State Government. At the opening ceremony, the Director General spoke on some of the issues the NYSS scheme is faced with, especially on the need for state government to provide permanent camps and upgrade current facilities. He assured Nigerians that core members will not be posted out to volatile areas. NYSE has a plan on ground on the, issue, on the safety of our core members. Normally, we collaborate with our the security agencies and all the core members during training have all the phone numbers of all the security agencies. So in case of danger, they know where to, to reach. And then normally, of course, where there are security challenges, we don't normally post core members to that area. So that has been on. We don't have problem at all. The Deputy Governor of Lagos State, who represented the Governor of Lagos State, spoke on the significance of the NYS scheme while restating the government's commitment in the program. Lagos State has a lot of skill acquisition centers that we can actually partner with going forward. So I think it's for us to liaise and see what works for you and works for what for the workmen, core members. It is important that our core member also understand that the way the world is going, your aunts can never deceive you. The pre-orientation workshop had all the state coordinators nationwide in attendance. <laughs> The National Youth Service Corps has been in existence for more than four decades. It's expected that the pre-orientation program for the NYC staff will address the issue of effective mobilization of core members, the issue of security, and states not opening up skill acquisition centers for core members. Sharon Jason, TVC News, Lagos. And from the security of youth core members to security in the creeks of the Niger Delta, keeping youth of the region away from violence used to be a pressing need. And the presidential amnesty program has been taking care of this since 2009. But how sustainable is the program? Senior correspondent Ivy Kanu finds out. In time past, they used to be called militants or Niger Delta agitators but not anymore, as they have embraced peace and laid down their arms. In this hall, government functionaries, traditional leaders drawn from the Niger Delta region, have gathered to witness the reform of 137 repentant Niger Delta youths. The youths who used to be armed with dangerous weapons are now armed with vocational training in various fields to help reintegrate them into the society. This the vice president attested to. The program has made available startup kits and packages for your use. Ensure that you use them for the purpose for which they have been given to you. There are opportunities for linkages with re relevant agencies for loans, grants, and technical support for your businesses. They are not only for themselves, they are also for their families. That's why when we, when we undertook this program, we knew that a region that has been conflicted and where the legitimacy of government has been contested is now being nursed back to be part of the greater Nigeria. No doubt the amnesty program since it was created has made some progress, but how sustainable is this program? We're going to give them a period of gestation in the sense that we are going to look. For six months, we are going to support them as they come out of this program so that they could we could stabilize them and they will create jobs for themselves and their partners. This is a very effective training 
after their, their training, some of them are not uh, empowered to utilize the training they have received. And there's no employment for them. So it, it means it, 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 a, it looks like we return to square one. But if after the training they're empowered with uh, all, all this, you know, the need, the, the amount they need to be on their own, to be self-employed, they can even uh, create, they can even employ other people. In the past one year, over 2,000 youths chosen from across the region have benefited from various training centers across the country. Ivy Kano, TVC News, Lagos. Coming up on TVC News at 10. Lagos State Government moves to tackle air pollution. Also ahead, a Papa truck drivers complain about non-compliance to directive at Lagos Seaport. Stay with us for details of those stories and even more after the break. You're watching TVC News at 10. The presiding justice of the Court of Appeal, Mohamed Garba, has been appointed to replace Zaina Bukachua as the chairman of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal. Zaina Bukachua stepped down following a petition from the People's Democratic Party's 2019 presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. Mr. Abubakar and his party had requested that she withdraw from the petition tribunal due to her relationship with an APC senator elect from Bochi State. She recused herself last month. The Speaker of the 5th Nasarawa State House of Assembly, Ibrahim Balarabi, has been returned to lead the 6th Assembly. Mr. Balarabi got a unanimous vote from the 24 members of the House. Godwin Aguam tells us more on that. Getting re-elected as Speaker of the 6th Nasarawa State House of Assembly came easy for Ibrahim Balarabi because of good read, he enjoys which led to a unanimous vote by all members of the House. But this attribute is counted as a strength by lawmakers of the 6th Assembly and has influenced their decision to elect him. As the two representative of the various constituencies in this state must always foster the enduring spirit of good governance by providing the greatest good for the greatest number of our people. In the light of this, we will be expected to partner with the other arms of government so that the desired development and improvement of our people's welfare is achieved without necessarily compromising the integrity of the institution we serve. With the inauguration of the 6th Assembly, residents of the state want legislations that would improve the welfare of civil servants and also industrialize the state. Nasarawa is an extremely civil service state. We would like to see uh, a more open environment for investors to come in and uh, key in. The economy is not that buoyant in the state. So we would like to see more innovations, more areas of uh, partnership and development that will see uh, the state moving in the direction of uh, a more prosperous state. The expectation is they should work hand to hand with our staff and everybody alone in Nasarawa State, including the legislative, judiciary, and executive. The sixth assembly has just been inaugurated. Expectations are high, but the people of Nasarawa State are optimistic that this new crop of lawmakers will bring the dividends of democracy to their doorsteps. Godwin, Agua, TBC News, Lafia, Nasarawa State. And from Nasarawa, we move to Lagos, where compliance to the executive order on the evacuation of trucks from the seaport area is proving difficult. TVC News findings reveal that some operators are disregarding traffic guidelines to access the seaports through the Lilipon Transit Park, a development many say could jeopardize efforts to sanitize the port environment. Our correspondent, Ifunaya Eze, reports. The Lilipon Transit Truck Park is a child of necessity. The transit park was created in response to the presidential order on the immediate decongestion of the Lagos Seaport Corridor to serve as a transit park for trucks pending when they are called to the port through a manual call-up system. These trucks have not moved for days. The traffic guidelines put in place by the presidential tax team direct truck drivers exiting the Lily Pond Transit Park to move through the marine bridge to assess the seaport. 
the truck drivers are complaining that contrary to that directive, some container laden trucks are still allowed to go through the Ijora Bridge straight on to the seaport. Is this an indication the rules are already being abused? Many trucks are supposed to come into this lily pond and from here they check every papers and pass them out. If you can see now from since yesterday or day before yesterday, trucks has been out here on queue and they are not moving at all. Simply because the ones they passed up there are still going. And by the time they will these ones they pass now, by the time they will be moving in, before they break, they will still move another set there. Pasha don't the enter inside because we don't over three weeks now where we are here. And then they go say they go pass motor and then they don't go pass motor. They are they are moving motor from top of bridge. Because when that one go, we know they allow this one to move again. And if you will not get right to talk, if you they talk, they say now nah, from federal they call. If you Mopo even stay me for under bridge, yes, they say federal send them come here and they are not give them anything. So they, are, they, are, they come they don't come and look the road. They come and find the money. The guidelines stipulate that only trucks with perishable items, flatbeds and sidebeds are allowed free access because of the nature of cargo they carry. The need for strict enforcement of the rules of engagement is being underscored. What should be done now is that those ones who sneak, who try to bypass Lily Pond, the, the law enforcement engine should ensure that any truck that is coming must have call up. And if they do not have call-up, they should be asked to go back. That is the only way Lily Pond uh, Transit Terminal can become functional. The problem of recurring extortions remain a troubling matter around the seaport area, an issue the presidential tax team needs to guard against if it expects to make any headway in establishing order around the seaport. Ifunanya Eze, TVC News, Lagos. The Lagos State Environmental Protection Agency has called on residents of the state to join hands with the state government to tackle air pollution. Correspondent Abimbola Gwebi has the story. Every 5th of June is World Environment Day. The theme for this year is air pollution and focuses on the need for governments, industries and communities to meet and explore renewable energy and green technology. A recent report by the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, estimates that over 7 million people die annually due to impacts of air pollution. Worried by this trend, the Lagos Environmental Protection Agency invited experts in the environment sector, industrialists, to discuss the way out. If you go to Okoba in Lagos, they are at work. You see where people are smoking skin of the animals, using burnt tires as a fuel. It was agreed that human activities and vehicular emissions contributed largely to the quality of air. In achieving an improved air quality, suggestions were made. One of them is the possibility of having electric cars against the use of fuel. A shift to solar power against the use of power generating sets, among others. Because we do not have regular supply of electricity, a lot of homes generate electricity using generators. Generators run on fossil fuel. The outcome of combusting fossil fuel is carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and they come out in high concentration that they become pollutants in the air that we're breathing. So if you measure our air quality, our air quality is so broadly laden with this large quantum of gas that is being emitted from our generating system. There is a catalytic cracking equipment that will be attached to silence as of vehicles. It will hate combustion of the gases that you are being used in running. The better option is to stop the use of uh, fossil fuel, change to electric motors, but they are expensive. We cannot afford it. If you want to have an able to do that, uh, we want to be sure that we sensitize people. Uh, people will not be caught unaware. Uh, we give them a long time for them to have that concept, one, how ample it is, 
how it could be beneficial when they start using catalyst or whatever technology that can be introduced. They're making it in a way that is affordable for them to do. With suggestions raised at this gathering geared towards tackling the threat posed by air pollution in the environment, experts here are optimistic that the quality of air in Nigeria can improve. They also believe that health expenses incurred on air pollution related diseases would drop drastically with more lives saved. Abimbola Agbebi, TVC News, Lagos. And still focusing on this year's theme of World Environment Day, we can tell you that air pollution continues to increase and affect the lives of millions of Nigerians. And although everyone needs clean air to live healthy lives, there is a particular set of people whose lives solely depend on breathing clean, clear air. Kemi Balogun tells us more. Nigeria accounts for the highest burden of fatalities from air pollution in Africa and it is ranked as the fourth globally with 150 deaths per 100,000 people. According to reports, the air people breathe in Nigeria is more likely to cause harm than the air in any other African country. Several complications can arise from breathing on clean or polluted air and one of such problems is asthma. Asthma is a chronic disease involving the airways in the lungs. These airways allow air to come in and out of the lungs. The airways become more swollen and muscles around the airways can tighten when something triggers symptoms. We had a rare interview with a woman who has been battling asthma for the past yeah. 26 years. She, however, does not want her identity revealed. I feel very sad talking about asthma. And as you can see, I am already, I'm already emotional about it because it brings back some bad memories. At times that I had asthma, chronic asthma attack that I passed out, I was not breathing at all. And if to say that my husband wasn't there, I would have died. She tells us how critical it is for her to breathe in clean air. If only we will have constant electricity, and very good roads in Nigeria. We will not have, we will solve at least half of the problems of asthma. Planting trees like this is one way to go when finding solutions to air pollution and partners advocating for cleaner air want government to improve on environmental standards. Partners advocating for a cleaner environment highlight other dangers associated with bad air. Look at the refuse burning the industries, the about, 2000, tw the about 12 million cars on our road, the more than 60 million generators in our marketing homes. Look at the carbon dioxide emission and its consequence in the environment. The government should support uh, promoting uh, good environmental practices if eventually it will lead to phasing out diesel engines, generators, then we have to do that. Both long-term and short-term exposure to polluted air can cause health problems such as reduced lung functions and other major health complications. Kemi Balogun, TVC News, Abuja. Still ahead on TVC News at 10. United Nations confirms the death of at least 95 persons in Mali attack. And also, who succeeds Theresa May? Uh, the Conservative uh, Party nominates 10 candidates for con to contest. Glad to have you with us. At least 95 persons have been killed in an attack on a village in central Mali. Alleged members of a Fulani ethnic group had raided Dongon village in Sangha district, burning houses to the ground. The death toll has been confirmed by the United Nations and government officials, though local residents say it may be higher. Clashes between Dongon hunters and Fulani herders have increased since a militant Islamist uprising in 2012. Both sides accused the other of carrying out attacks amid the unrest. The UN mission in Mali today said that a deadly attack that took place, uh, a deadly attack took place yesterday evening in the village of Sobanuku in the Mopti region. According to preliminary information, armed men bro uh, led an attack that left at least 95 people dead and many others wounded. 
The mission is coordinating its response in support of Malian authorities, and the United Nations system in Mali is mobilizing to provide humanitarian assistance to help people affected. The mission also provided air support this morning in support of the Malian government to prevent future uh, further attacks. Now, 10 candidates have been nominated in the contest to succeed Theresa May as Conservative Party leader and British Prime Minister. The candidates include France runner, former Foreign Minister Boris Johnson, his successor Jeremy Hunt, Environment Minister Michael Gove, former Brexit Minister Dominic Raab, Health Minister Matt Hancock and Interior Minister Sajid Javid. The other candidates are International Development Minister Rory Stewart, former Minister Esther McVie, from a leader of the House of Commons, Andrea Litsum, and Conservative lawmaker Mark Harper. The first round of voting among Conservative lawmakers to begin whittling down the field to two candidates who will then be put to a vote of party members will take place on Thursday. The memory of Ras Kimono will remain for a long time in the minds of lovers of reggae music in Nigeria. Exactly one year after his death, friends and colleagues took out time to celebrate the rubber dub master with a tribute lecture and concert in Lagos. The reggae music maestro dominated the Nigerian music industry with several songs to his credit, including Under Pressure and Rumba Style. He died on the 10th of June 2018, exactly one year today. He was indeed a very revolutionary musician. He wasn't singing about songs that would praise people or to flatter them. He was a socially conscious musician, and his music was aimed at trying to effect changes in the society, talking to the rulers and also encouraging the downtrodden not to just sit but to also take some action towards improving their own lives. Raskimono honored the music industry and the entire country while he was alive. Even though he had met stardom, right? Met ministers and governors and dined with uh, Obas and all that. He was a very simple human being. Kimono is loved by all, you know. Um, a lot of people have said so many nice things about him in there. And one of the things that everybody knows about Kimono is how humble he is as a person. And hence, the reason why people have come out today to honor him. He has a large heart. He's larger than life. He's, um, he's a father to all. You know, Kimono is a man that you would go to meet if you have problems and if it is within his powers, he would he would leave his own problems to solve your own problems, you know. And I, this is the reason why everybody has come out today to honor him. All right, we have our reporter joining us now, Theophilos Elama, to give us an insight into how uh, a one year exactly after the death of Kimono, how he was remembered. Theophilos, can you give us a picture of how Kimono was remembered today? All right, thank you very much, Mike. Now, exactly one year today, Raskimono, the rubber dub uh, style, uh, died. He left this world. He actually was sick and in the hospital, and nobody expected that he was going to die because, according to reports, he was still up and agile and well until he finally left this world. And, of course, I remember that date was on a Sunday. But today, making it one year, the industry came together. The daughter, Ogie, Kimono, who is also into reggae music, brought people together to celebrate her father. And uh, there was a lecture today, and it talked about his music, which revolutionized the music industry and what it is now. Now, Ras Kimono can be remembered for having um, very good lyrics, according to uh, the musicians and his colleagues and friends that we spoke with today. There's even a concert ongoing at this time. Uh, where uh, the life and times of Raskimono is being remembered and everybody is at this time happy at the fact that he left a lasting legacy. Raskimono was loved by a lot of people. He was loved by not just ordinary Nigerians, but even those in government as well. And a lot of people songs made sense. They had very good lyrics and he used the songs to uh, put out the ills and societal ills out there for all to see and for government to do something about. So he was, he has been remembered today for everything he was. He was seen as a simple man. We've had a personal converse, a conversation with him while he was alive and 
we, we, we marvel at his simplicity in all of this, in all the stardom that Raskimono is known for. He, he's a very simple, he was a very simple man. And so the industry came together today to celebrate him, celebrate his le legacy, and he's been recognized as an institution, not just as a man that uh, revolutionized music in Nigeria, but an institution who has done great things and his legacy is going to live for long. All right, uh, Theophilus Salama, thank you very much. Certainly Nigerians who remember uh, Theophilus, for, uh, sorry, uh, Raskimuno for a long time to come. Right. You're watching TVC News at 10, coming up. CBN governor in search of ways to improve Nigeria's economy meets key players in the private sector. Details in business. Welcome to business. We're starting from the CBN, and that's because the governor, Godwin Mefele, has re-emphasized the need to strengthen efforts in the coming years to stimulate growth and create jobs in the country. Mefele made this position at a consultative roundtable with some economic shareholders in Lagos. This consultative forum was put together by the Central Bank of Nigeria to create a platform for private sector players to air their views and add inputs into the roadmap to be unveiled by the CBN governor later this week. Hi, my friend. Thank you. I am meant to just listen. CBN so, governor in his opening remarks warned that rising volatility in the crude oil market occasioned by a rapid increase in supply of shale oil by the United States portends great risk to Nigeria's growth trajectory. At the moment, Shale oil production per day stands at 12 million barrels from 9 million barrels per day in 2017. This session is particularly important in the light of the challenges that confronted us as a nation following the massive drop in crude prices between 2015 to 2017. The crisis brought to the fore the challenge an economy could face when it relies on a single commodity for most of its foreign exchange earnings and government revenue. The crisis also underscored the need for measures that will drive productivity in key sectors of the Nigerian economy, such as agriculture and coal manufacturing. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu, private sector players led by Aliko Dangote and Jimovia, had imputes for the central bank governor as he starts a new term leading the country's apex bank. On our part, we're looking to modernize essential services that will strive for maximum efficiency across our public sector areas. We're going to do this to ensure that we can boost our local economy so that it becomes increasingly competitive, it's innovative and technologically driven. And we're hoping that it will strive to provide an extra revenue that is required for us to reach the next level of growth and prosperity for our people. Agent increase 10 gigawatts, which is 10,000 megawatts, in 18 months. We've been struggling for 18 years without adding 1,000 megawatts. And we've spent three, four times the amount of Egypt. Why? So I think we all have to be concerned and try and partner both us and the government. How do we grow our economy? How do we stop queuing up for the um, uh, petroleum products or the revenue from oil monoproduct economy? Uh, the CBN governor alluded to that already. We cannot survive that. It's a, it's a time bomb. No matter what economic theories that we propose, it cannot work. Votes. Central Bank Governor maintains that the bank's development finance initiatives and foreign exchange interventions are targeted at supporting vulnerable persons in the society. Tolulokwe Ogunjobi, TVC News, Lagos. Promacida Nigeria Limited, makers of Cowbell Mill and Cowbell Chocolate, has launched a consumer promotion product today. TVC News' Barakal Kuta tells us more. 
Cowbell has unveiled a promo product called Cowbell Chocolate Get Up and Go with a blend of 28 vitamins and minerals to enable its consumers, especially children, to get up and go. The promo aims to reward loyal consumers. We have a commitment to our consumers to serve them in good times and in bad times, and we intend to do that. To call on all our consumers, mothers and kids, to join Cowbell Chocolate in this promotion tagged Cowbell Chocolate Get Up and Goal. We need to leverage on their passion point. We know a lot of Nigerians with love football, and that's why we are doing this, to actually help, first of all, to give something back to the society, and at the end of the day, to improve the Cowbell Chocolate top line and bottom line. Get Up and go. It is a three-month promo which starts today, Monday, 10th June, 2019, and will end on Friday, September 13th, 2019, to enable consumers win prizes. Prizes to be won include the latest Sony PlayStation 4 console system with virtual reality headsets, Super Strikers jerseys, soccer boots, footballs, and other consolation items. To participate in the promo, consumers had to collect nine 20 gram sachets of Cowbell Chocolate Super Strikers themed packaging with unique character and submit to any of Cowbell 190 redemption centers across the country to win any of the amazing prizes. Once you are able to collect the nine unique characters, once you go to any of the 190 redemption centers pan Nigeria, once you take a lucky dip, you take a scratch card, you scratch, you win something. Even if you don't have the nine unique characters, you can get 20 cowbell chocolate, 20 grams sachet with five unique characters. You can still win something. Spread it across all our depots and all locations. So every state and every important town in Nigeria today, we have this particular flex um, pack size. Promacido Nigeria says it will continue to promote youth development in the country through different initiatives and activities. Barakel Ukuta, TVC News, Lagos. Now let us go to the Nigerian Stock Exchange and we have a very feeble news is coming a week trade showed at the Nigerian Stock Market on Monday. And this happened as big firms recorded price depreciations across various market sectors. Here's Efiongek. Liquidity squeeze moved across market sectors on Monday as many portfolio investors held back funds during mid-trade. The stock market community looks forward to seeing quick appointments and inauguration of the new cabinet. That action will give confidence to investors to then part with their funds. The volume of business on the floor was averaged at about 247 million shares. Unity Bank and Cement Company of Northern Nigeria were seriously depressed in their stocks. And now we go over to other African markets. In South Africa, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange ended business in green. Many investors stayed heavily with real estate and mining securities. In Cairo, Egypt, the stock market closed positive. The strength of the currency and the pattern of manufacturing gave investors confidence to pass with their funds. Back in West Africa, the stock exchange in Accra, Ghana, recorded lower transactions. Insurance and banking securities took attention from institutional investors. If young Echo TVC News at the stock exchange. Thank you, If young All prices trade lower at the market centers early today due to poor demand from major factories in Asia. At the London market, for instance, European Brent trades for $63 for a barrel. For the OPEC basket brand, price drops to $60 per barrel in early bargain. The International Energy Agency urges crude buyers to make investments in natural gas infrastructure as it sees rising demand for crucial energy commodity in the near future. And that's all in business. We're still ahead on TBC News at 10. Super Eagles have their first training session in Egypt ahead of the Africa Cup of Nations. Details in a moment. Stay with us.
And in sports, day five of the Nigeria Professional Football League was played on Monday with plenty of drama witnessed at the Agege Township Stadium. The first and biggest match of the day was between Enugu Rangers and Kano Pillars. Pillars took the lead early in the second half, courtesy of a beautiful free kick by captain Rabiu Ali. Despite being one goal and one man down, Rangers won a penalty 17 minutes from time when he find Edwin was stripped inside the penalty box. Godwin Aguda scored the result and spot kick to level the game for Rangers. Godwin Aguda goes through. Can he make it happen? And of course, he brings things to parity. It's very rare you see Godwin Aguda miss out on a situation such as this. Remember, Rangers are... But after the final whistle, a disgruntled Kano Pillars captain Rabiu Ali attacked the referee. His action incited Pillars fans, who then invaded the pitch with sticks, stones, and other objects. And things have gotten, it's, it's a mayhem. It's mayhem right now as Canopilla's fans have gotten onto the pitch and this is, this is absolutely very shameful. This is very, very shameful. The VIPs and even where we are are being pelted by stones In other matches, defending champions Lobby Stars with uh, Drew Goles against Aqua United. The result dented Lobby's hopes of retaining the Nigeria Professional Football League title. The third game of the day saw Ayimba beat Ifan Yoba 3-1. And so this is how the MPFL Super 6 playoff table looks like after five rounds of matches. Kando Pillars are on top with nine points. Ayimba second, despite having the same number of points and goal difference. But they stay second and head-to-head, -head, having lost to Kando Pillars when both sides met during the playoff. Aqua United, Rangers, Lobby Stars and Ifan Yoba follow in third, fourth, fifth and last. Nigeria Super Eagles have had their first training session in Ismailia, Egypt, ahead of the Africa Cup of Nations. The team arrived in Ismailia early Monday morning for a one-week intensive camping. The players trained on Monday evening at the training pitch located within the premises of their hotel at about 5 p.m. local time. Technical and tactical sessions have been scheduled for the team this week before they play Senegal in a warm-up match on Sunday. And former Super Eagles player and manager Samson Siasia has backed the Super Eagles to succeed at the Nations Cup. He said preparation for the Nations Cup has been good and the forthcoming friendly will uh, help shape up the team. The friendly matches are not the same with the actual, actual match. So when they give them the benefit of doubt, uh, they have to make their corrections and make sure they get, get ready for the main event, uh, which is coming up very, very soon. He's a man in charge. He knows uh, exactly what he needs. From the players, so so hey, the ones that he has picked, hopefully, is going to make Nigerian proud. So we just have to stand behind him and make sure they deliver. Former Fulham and Senegal striker Diomansi Kamara has described Nigeria as one of the favourites to win the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations. The French-born footballer played for West Brom, Port, uh, Portsmouth and Fulham in the Premier League before joining Celtic on loan. With less than two weeks to the tournament in Egypt, Kamara told TBC News that host Egypt, Senegal and Nigeria have the qualities to win the first ever 2014 Nations Cup trophy. Senegal, we know we have a good team, we have good players, but you know, it's the first time the African Cup will be in uh, 24 clubs, so uh, 24 nations. Egypt, they are playing at home with Mohamed Salah, they will be tough. They have Nigeria also, they have a good team, they have a good coach. Cameroon, of course, uh, Ivory Coast, Maroc, so many clubs can, uh, many uh, national teams can uh, won the trophy. I think it will be uh, something uh, really amazing. 
And Pogbeni Ogun has been re-elected chairman of the Bayelsu State Football Association in a contest supervised by Ibrahim Gusso, the chairman of the ch of chairman of the Nigeria Football Federation. The main contender and FIFA match agent Ebi Egbe was, however, has however rejected the outcome of the election. Ovietime George has details. <laughs> One after the other, the 17 accredited delegates entered the venue of the election to vote for their candidates with FIFA match agent A.B. Egbe and Paul Beni Ogun as the two contenders for the chairmanship position of the Bayelsa Football Association. The incumbent was declared winner with 12 out of 17 votes. This second term, what we specifically intend to do is to build FA complex where we have a, we have a field, we have small hostel to accommodate referees and a, an event center. Now the the idea behind it is so that where teams can use that place for precisions to make the league more vibrant. I have a lot to give to Nigeria, not only by Esther State, you know. So honestly speaking, if I want to come as an FA member, it's a plus to Bayelsa State in Nigeria. You know, I am Money Michel. I will always remain Money Michel. And I'm, whether I'm an FA chairman, I'm not an FA chairman, I will always be who I am. I am Money Michel. I'm here, I'm here to help the state. If they don't want me to help them, I wash my hands out. You know, I am going to protest this, but I think, I think, I think, I think, I think this is wrong. Members of the Nigeria Football Federation and the Confederation of African Football witnessed the election. The election has uh, come and gone, winners has emerged, and I'm uh, equally very happy about the process. The next thing is uh, for us to come together and see what we can do to move the game of football forward. The process was very transparent, credible, and I don't think anybody can contest this process. And I'm happy that uh, we are following due process here in Bahasa State. <laughs> George, TVC News, Yenagoa, Bayelsa State. And finally, in basketball, four-time NBA champion Tony Parker has announced his retirement from the sport after an 18-year career. The 37-year-old spent 17 years with the San Antonio Spurs, where he won all his four um, NBA titles in 2003, 2005, 2007, and 2014. The point guard spent his final season in the NBA with the Charlotte Hornets. Parker is a six-time NBA All-Star player who has, or rather was crowned, NBA Finals MVP in 2007. To, to realize, you know, to be compared to to uh, the Celtics trio with Bird or the Lakers trio with Magic is like, I don't know, growing up in, in France, I never thought I'd be achieving something like that. So I think I realize more when I, when I retire. But uh, obviously it's an unbelievable um, accomplishment and I uh, feel very lucky to be with, with those guys, you know, all those years, especially in professional sports, you know, it's very rare that you play 12, 13, 14 years, you know, with the same teammates, same coach. And that's sports at this time. And on the sporting note, we wrap it up on TVC News at 10. But remember, you can get more stories on all our social media platforms on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. You can search for the handle at TVC News NG. There are also stories within Nigeria and the rest of the world for you on our website, tvcnews.tv. Thanks for staying with us on TVC News. Bye for now. Bye now.